Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to this episode of Security Matters Hawaii. We're live in the Think Tech Hawaii studios with my friend Paul Cohn from Phoenix, and you're the General National Business Development Manager. Like, you got a long title, man. Good for you. <laughs> thanks for coming in today. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, we're going to talk about the cloud, and, and, and some of you know about the cloud, and you know about cloud this and cloud that, and Google, and Azure, and Amazon, but you may not know a lot about cloud-based access control. And access control has moved into the cloud very aggressively. It, it's, a, it's a very easy play, and we're going to kind of drill into some of the things, the reasons I think that it took so long to happen and why people didn't do it. Um, Paul brings a lot of expertise uh, here today, and so we're going to have some fun chit-chatting. So I know you know about access control in the cloud, but the first thing I always got to ask my guests is sort of uh, what, what, you know, for you, and from a security perspective, you know, the, the people you're talking to in the industry, what keeps you up at night these days? Man, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, that's a good question. Usually, it's my dogs. See, my barking dogs. Good that, no right? one ever gives me that answer. That's a great <laughs> answer. Uh, but from you know, in, in this context, uh, I, I'd say, you know, really trying to truly understand um, when this adoption is finally going to take place. You know, <laughs> see, this conversion. Part, part of your job keeping you up at night. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when, when are we going to start to see the the true adoption of cloud, specifically in the security industry? Um, you know, we've seen it on the IT side when it comes to uh, voice systems and, and all the, the, the mm. converting to IP and all these IoT devices and so sure. forth. And we've just been so far behind in the physical security industry, um, just waking up one day and, and realizing, all right, we're, we're finally here. We're there. Yeah. And you're going to be part of the, you're going to be part hopefully. of the charge. Yes, hopefully. Um, so, you know, to, to that point, um, what do you, do you, do you think it, I mean, the manufacturers we know, like the, there's big names out there in the industry that have been around, they're established, and they've got a big, thick, heavy software package, right, yep. that, that really needs a lot of processing power to run on your PC. And then they've got a big back-end database structure with SQL. Um, do, you, do you think that's been the problem for them just to retool that stuff? Or do you think it took somebody new to kind of come along and build it fresh? I think it's a combination of both. Mm. Um, I think that uh, the the underlying architecture of how uh, a true cloud-based access control platform is built um, really plays a lot into mm. uh, a lot of factors. Um, I think that uh, from a from a scalability perspective, from a usability perspective, mm. you can't just take a piece of software and put it in a data center somewhere sure. and expect it to yeah. be cloud. Does, doesn't perform. Right? It doesn't perform the same way. So taking a look at how it's developed, how it's architected, um, and then you know, increasing the adoption rate from that perspective, mm -hmm. right? And, and realizing what the true driving factors are when it comes to adopting cloud access control. Mm -hmm. And I, I know to that point, so Phoenix was able to adopt a, a different database structure instead of like, mm -hmm. traditionally it's always been SQL. Yep. The world knows SQL, the access control world definitely knows SQL. Um, but you guys uh, went down a, a different path. Mm -hmm. uh, you can talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. So um, our, our latest platform has been architected and developed around what we would consider a NoSQL uh, database. Okay, um, wow. There's a number of different NoSQL databases. We chose uh, a, a solution called Mongo Database. Okay. Um, they're really the industry leader when it comes to, to NoSQL. And um, th th there's a number of different benefits that you get from a NoSQL database. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing is the scalability factor. Um, traditionally, Microsoft SQL or any other kind of traditional SQL database uh, really what is considered scaling vertically, right? Meaning that uh, if you need more database structure, you got to pay for it. I see. Um, it's expensive. It's heavy. Uh, with a NoSQL type of, of database, it scales horizontally. Ah, so it allows us to provide the necessary database structure or capacity, if you will, mm -hmm. um, to our clients, whether that's small amount of data or a large amount of data. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's very fast. Uh, there's a couple other you know, benefits that, that you get as far as recovery um, and how quickly you can retain data okay. um, in, the, in the off chance that your system goes offline or, or something um, happens like that. So a number of different features and benefits from, from a, a NoSQL database also sits in the cloud as well. Yeah. So It seems awesome because, you know, the 
I think access control systems where you, you know, the challenge for all of them was always how many transactions can you process. Right. So, you know, when you've got a, a database like you folks have that can scale rapidly, you know, because I, I don't know if our audience knows, but if you've got huge office buildings in New York or, or San Francisco, everybody's showing up to work at 8 a.m. And, and you've got tens of thousands of transactions that have got to get done rapidly, right? And so that scalability, you know, yep. in performance gives you that with this, you know, in the cloud architecture. Absolutely, as well as redundancy as well. So, yeah, um, you know, in the traditional model, you're, you're buying multiple different SQL databases, mm -hmm. right, that are running in multiple different environments. Uh, with, with a NoSQL or with our Mongo, it's, it's uh, multiple replica sets. So the transactions, the data that's getting processed, uh, everything that's that's getting written to the database uh, is is constantly being mirrored. Wow. So you have that redundancy built in as well. That's awesome. And it's man. generally less expensive than yeah. SQL. And we're talking about an Amazon hosted an AWS hosted environment for uh, Phoenix specifically. Yes, we awesome. are hosted in okay. AWS. Excellent. Yeah. Yep. So there's there's a, and so the, you know what that gives you is a global infrastructure that you know when you say resilience, I mean your uptime is basically infinite, right? This thing, I mean, unless the world ends or all, all the power of the world stops or something, yep. you know, you're just not at really at risk of losing your data or, or your data not being replicated. You know, there's multiple instances of it available all the time dynamically. Absolutely. That's super expensive to try to reproduce in a on-premise environment. Yep. You know, I, I recall the days of, of Legato and failover SQL clusters and all this kind of stuff just to, you know, get 5.9 uh, resiliency for our, our military folks. You know, it's super, yep. super pricey. Yep. And so this, this uh, the customers are getting the advantage of all of that built into a package like you folks are building already. It's Out just, of the gate. And there's no cost. It grows. You don't need the different version of SQL or whatever, right? Yep. There's just no cost. That's, right. That's amazing. So, um, cloud, some people freak out about, you know, oh, where's, where's all my data going? How does it get there? Let's talk a little bit about getting it out, off the premise, because you know you've in a traditional access control system, and they're all about the same. You've got a card that you know you use on the reader or, or your phone on a reader. Then you've got some data that goes upstream to the controller, and in your case, the controller's talking instead of to a local database, it's going right out through the firewall to the cloud. Correct. And so let's talk. Tell, let's give us a little bit about what's going on there. You've got some encryption happening, and you're sending that data up one side. That's correct. Yeah. So um, it, it's it. it Encryption as far as TLS 1.2 goes Excellent. is which is the standard, which is the standard. Absolutely, uh, it is optional, um, but you know all of our boards get shipped out with it enabled. Okay, um, you know it's completely serverless infrastructure, nice um, or, or architecture. So it's controllers talking directly to the cloud, outbound communication only, establishing that trusted communication within the AWS cloud environment, mm -hmm. so that those transactions can flow bidirectionally, fully encrypted. Nice. Um, you know there's 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 some inherent value as far as total cost of ownership or um, you know, just the, the, the re reduction of infrastructure cost on that alone, mm -hmm. right? Be being able to just have that, that controller talk and communicate directly to the wow. cloud. And I know um, our, our team set some of these up and it it's absolutely takes like minutes. Yeah. So that's, and it, was that a function that you decided, I guess when your firmware, so you, uh, and you guys, we should talk a little bit about, about Mercury hardware. Mercury hardware okay. is used yep. by a whole lot of different manufacturers today, and you guys adopted Mercury we did. so that it would be, I guess, well-known and Absolutely. easy to use. Yeah, I mean, we have a philosophy, a couple, a couple things that really hit home for us as far as what our philosophy is, and, and one of them is uh, open hardware. Okay. Um, you know, we have our, our founder uh, and, and our entire team really has a, a, a philosophy that the customer uh, always should have a right to choose, right? Okay. And should awesome. never be locked into anything proprietary from a reader and credential perspective, as well as a door hardware, uh, door controller perspective. Mm -hmm. So we chose Mercury for that reason. Um, we also have a number of different uh, you know, options and features, obviously, that come along with that. But uh, you know, Mercury is open, so um, really gives the customer the right to choose. That's awesome. And so, so then you, you, in the factory, you're basically building uh, your firmware into the, the Mercury panel. So when our installers get it, and they, they bring it online to customer's place, it, it goes out and establishes this connection to the cloud. Correct, right. In the awesome. traditional model with a premise-based access control system, Mercury or, or anybody else, those controllers are what are, are getting shipped out with what we would consider IP server mode, okay. right? Um, as, far sure. as, the con as far as the communication mode goes. Ours get shipped out in IP client, mm -hmm. and that allows that controller to call outbound, right? One of our uh, benefits is that we don't require any inbound ports to be open up on a customer's network. Nice. So it's an outbound call, again, establishing that communication. Um, you have a number of different port choices that you can choose, but it's all outbound. 
uh, and yes, that is how it gets shipped out. Uh, the setup process is, you know, like you said, a number of minutes wow. um, because we've taken care of most of the heavy lifting before that board gets out the door. Isn't that something? So we've got a. Um with cloud-based access control, if you're just joining us, you know, we've got this resiliency in the cloud. We've got a, a very secure infrastructure to provide the, the transactions and the data from the system on-prem up to that cloud server. Um, talk a little bit about this, the software development that you folks have been through. I know you're, you've got a, a fairly mature version product now. It's been out around a while. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what, what have you seen in growth there as far as is ease of use and those types of things? Yeah, I mean, really, it's there's a lot of factors that go into that. Okay. Um, again, when, when our, our founder, um, when when he went to work and developed our first version of the software, um, that version itself was developed around cloud. Okay. So, wow. Um, from from day one, cloud, and and we chose AWS because at the time, Amazon Web Services was um, really the industry leader, and I, you know, okay. I, I still believe that they are. Uh, but we have Google Cloud and you know Azure now, and so, but. Uh, it was built around the cloud, so again, we're not taking a, a, a thick client or a piece of software and mm. putting it in a data center somewhere and mm -hmm. calling it cloud. Uh, we utilize a number of different services uh, around AWS um, that really provide us the capability to make those API calls, change code on the fly. Oh. So that all plays into the user experience, um, very low latency when it comes to transactions, mm -hmm. you're seeing things in real time, um, and again, you know, a number of different features and benefits because um, we use a single API, a REST API, okay? okay. So the, it's one API um, that, that that is the product, right? Wow. And that's what sits in the cloud. Uh, and the performance that we get, that tacked on with Mongo database is really where, mm -hmm. um, is where you see the scalability and the performance. Yeah, it looked, um, we were looking at this in the shop um, Monday and you know, it, it looks very mature to me. You know, from an access control perspective, I didn't see and I didn't hear anyone in the room bring up things that, that they wanted to see done that, that the product's not already delivering. Yep. I mean, to the point that you have visio, visitor management and yep. video uh, integration already there. Yeah, so I mean, from what we've seen, you know, cloud access control has been around for quite some time. Um, there's some you know, uh, uh, manufacturers that have developed it and you know, have, have really brought it, to, brought it to light. What we wanted to do is we wanted to build an enterprise class ah, access control okay. platform, meaning that it has all the features and functionality that an enterprise customer, whether you have two readers or 10,000, mm -hmm. um, you, you have what, we, what I would consider a true access control solution. There are other solutions out there that, uh, in my opinion, are, are really just keyless entry solutions. Mm -hmm. right? And so sure. um, when you think about the reporting, uh, the, the number of different you know, triggers and procedures, the visitor management, the, the, the integrations that, that we have, um, that all kind of plays into what I would consider a, a true access control solution. Mm -hmm. And especially from that enterprise perspective, which you mentioned, our, our enterprise, our, your larger clients that have multiple sites or multiple things happening that they're, that they're concerned about from a security perspective, we're bringing all different types of data, not just force door. They maybe weren't bringing the video with yeah. that force door, or they may need to bring some visitor management in the video to, to confirm that, that that guy down there is really the guy that they need to go see that's locked in their man trap or whatever it may be. So there, there's a lot of value in, the, in approaching the enterprise, and they've sort of been the last group, you might say, to say, ooh, can you really handle us? Because these oh, are sure. global implementations, yeah. you know, probably 100,000 readers. I don't know. Sure. I don't have customers like that in Hawaii, but yeah. really large implementations. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of different objections that we've seen and we've had to overcome mm. uh, when it comes to presenting our solution to the enterprise customer. And I, and I often do, you know, ask people, what, what does enterprise mean to you? Is that you know, does it, is it number of employees? Is it number of sites? Mm -hmm. Is it um, you know, number of card readers? And, and you'll get a different answer from anybody you talk to. So um, for us, it's, it's really being able to scale up or down as you need to and, and support um, you know, that, that environment, uh, no matter how big or small it really is. Wow, yeah, the cloud's gonna make us infinite, even for <laughs> access control. Yep. We're gonna pay some bills. We'll be back in about one minute. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at three, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. 
Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. I'm with Paul Cohen of Phoenix, and we're talking about cloud-based access control. You might want to take a look at this if you're like considering replacing, upgrading, or doing some of your access control systems, because cloud is happening big in this space, and these are, these are one of the leaders that are doing it. Um, Paul, different customers, you were just talking about how they have different concerns, mm -hmm. you know, maybe based on their size, or based on their past experience, or whatever it may be. Um, what do you think are, or what's the, what you see when you talk to you know integrators like myself? What do you think the driving factors are for cloud adoption? You know, what, what's making them say yes? So I, I think there's really there's probably three primary um, concerns as far as what we see in the industry. Um, you know, our philosophy is that one uh, it has to be mobile, meaning yes. You have to be able to access your system and manage your system from anywhere in the world. Uh, with anytime. Anytime, <laughs> without having to be on a corporate network or some sort of VPN in mm -hmm. um, type of, of scenario. Uh, it has to be secure uh, from a cybersecurity mm -hmm. perspective. We take cybersecurity very seriously, uh, doing a number of things um, that you may not see in the industry. Um, so it has to be secure by default. It has to be encrypted by default because one of the biggest objections with cloud anything cloud, applications in the cloud, cloud access control is that uh, it's gotta be secure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the convenience factor, uh, and this really plays into the user, the administrator, different organizations within the company, or different you know areas within the organization, IT facilities, it's gotta be convenient. Mm. Um, you know, the setup and the, and the process of deploying Cloud access control can't be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there shouldn't have to be any kind of um, uh, you know changes that you got to make on your network from a firewall perspective or anything else. Um, you know, updates and patching as far as he, keeping your system up to date has mm -hmm. to be easy. It has to be automatic. I mean, imagine if you you know on your iPhone, your mobile mobile device, if you had to go through a, a rigorous process just to update to the latest iOS or the latest version. I right? do. It takes, <laughs> it takes you, a half you, hour. But, <laughs> but, you, but you just have yeah. to click update, right? Yeah, exactly. And it, and it does it for and you. And with, 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 with this, you do it for the everyone. Correct. Because you just update the cloud instance. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, those I would say those are the three primary uh, driving factors, mobility, convenience, and security, sure. cybersecurity. And, and convenience is a big thing, and I, I think it's lost. I've definitely been through a lot of organizations, and when they get start to get a little bigger and it's out of the hands of one person and you've got different organizations that need a different feature, one one's going to issue badges, one's going to get the alarms, one's going to do the IT management side perhaps, yep. or, or the uh, uh, set the authentication levels or whatever, manage access levels or whatever it may be. Um, all of a sudden, those guys, they're not talking, maybe they don't even work in the same departments, and, and the management of the system becomes like this hassle. Yeah. So when it's easy, and when it's cloud, and there's like training right on like YouTube for it, <laughs> yeah. right? These, pers these people can learn their piece of the pie very, very easily. And I think it shouldn't be lost, because um, we said mobility, and everyone's really used to that phone, but it should not be lost on, about this mobility comment, because mm -hmm. there is a a, a browser-based instance, there's a, a mobile you know, device instance, mm -hmm. um, and you've got all that same functionality in all of those. Correct. So this truly goes with you anywhere, so you can do whatever your tasking may be. You need to get approved for badge for printing, for example. Yep. That can get done. You need to get an access level authorized for someone that can get done you know, while you're at lunch. Yep. Amazing. Or right. on the beach. And, and it can be done securely. Absolutely. Right. So that's, we didn't really talk about that, that the other side of that pipe, um, you know, from the cloud, the, the client side is also encrypted down to the device. So we've got this end-to-end -end encryption. Everything goes up through one pipe and it's encrypted. Everything comes back down to the devices for the user experience encrypted. 
That's correct. Very safe, yep. very secure, very functional. So this is why everything's gone. That's why everything's going cloud because it works like that. It's yep. amazing. Let's get in. Uh, we 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 brought up a couple of these other uh, points, and uh, maybe you've heard some of this. I don't know, but um, the stereotypes, and we touched on a little bit, and, and perceived barriers. So, how's that going? You know, you got sort of a, a national vision on some of the big boys and, mm -hmm. and the, the larger, medium-sized companies. Let's call them, mm -hmm. and you know, down to the small guys. Well, what are you seeing? You know, is it is it, is, the, is that barrier dropping? I, I yes. would presume so. Yeah, f definitely for sure. Okay. Um, you know, I would say five years ago, um, you know, or even even sooner than that, three years ago, we we were still trying to overcome, you know, the the barrier or the objection that you know, cloud access control is only designed for small customers. Mm -hmm. It's only good for the the one to ten door uh, environments, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't scale. Um, you know, some uh, some other objections as far as you know, we, there is limited on integrations, or mm -hmm. um, you know, the some certain uh, it's not secure. Uh, certain industries won't won't adopt it, like mm -hmm. the financial or banking uh, industry, and yeah, because their stuff's not in the cloud, right? Because <laughs> your because your your bank account's not in the cloud, yeah. right? Yeah, Whoops. yeah. Um, so I think we're we're starting to see, uh, you know, that change, mm -hmm. and I think the technology obviously is changing, um, and 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 it's getting less expensive as well. You know, one of the I'd say one of the the bigger uh, objections is. Yeah, it, it's a it's, it's a reoccurring model, right? So just like we have mm -hmm. music or Spotify or Netflix or whatever, sure. you know, we pay it every month or every year, and we have everything at our fingertips, and we can get whatever we want. That that took a, it took a while for companies to to really understand that. But mm. you know, we're helping as as well as you know firms like like yours, um, helping our customers understand that there's a number of benefits that can be gain through that, you know, u utilizing operational expenditures versus capital, mm -hmm. um, you know, really having that predictive model. So if you're, you know, if you're rolling out sites once a year, you you, you know what that cost is mm -hmm. and you can predict it and budget for it next year and mm -hmm. the year after and the year after. So yes, it is recurring, um, but, you know, they're, they're, our, our customers are really starting to benefit from that and, and all the other features that go along with it as far as uptime and resiliency and redundancy, that all plays into it. Yeah, and we looked at a, an ROI tool that you've got that really showed that gap. You know, there's mm -hmm. this this OpEx model for recurring revenue. It really gets the customer all, everything that he wants from a down, downtime perspective, a backup, an encryption. They get all of that, and it actually costs less. Mm -hmm. And the, I know that the, the pricing, there's a point at which if you're really big, you got to kind of come to you guys and work something out, right? So some of these guys are consuming if our audience doesn't know, they kind of consume cloud services with the amount of CPU that they use in the cloud and the amount of storage that they take. And so this, this model is not quite there yet and because it, it, it's kind of transactional based and it's reader based and it's mm -hmm. con, uh, credential based. There's some other factors in access control that don't quite fit that model. But the big boys will probably come at you with some of that, right? More of a cost plus compute or something. Sure, potentially, yeah. right? I mean, and, and, and we, you know, there's a number of different options as far sure. as you know what that looks like, um, but the, and there certainly is a breakpoint, you know. But it, again, we're 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 trying to uh, to sell the value of yeah. of this, right? And there's a lot of hidden costs oh, that that go into a traditional premise-based model, and yes. you know, things that uh, all the way down to how much it costs to power and cool a server. Yeah, I know why that's super significant. Right? Yeah, how much electricity costs? Yeah. Are. How much time is, is does it take for your administrators, your IT folks, to make changes or do updates? There's a cost associated yeah. with that. It may not be right in your face or up front, mm. um, but all that kind of plays into it. And um, again, you know, sometimes we, we pay more for value than uh, than you know trying to go with the cheapest option. So, mm -hmm. and then, and again, it, I I think we saw that it was actually less expensive, mm -hmm. and you get all that value anyway, which is amazing for those people that that fall into that level, which is a lot. Yep. Um, I want to get to some of this stuff. We talked about some of these 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 customer problems. So. You know, when the customers start, or when you get brought in, I'm sure you're, you know, you're visiting with integrators to a customer who's like, you know, I need a new access control system. And then the VAR's like, well, why? Mm -hmm. And so do you have to kind of walk them through some of these value propositions that we've been discussing today? Is that what it takes for the customer to understand? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and it's always been my philosophy, and I think really everyone at, at Phoenix, and a lot of people in the industry as well, is that, you know, there's some really, really good solutions out there when it, with access control. There's people that have been doing it for, for 20 yeah, plus years, sure. right? And a lot of the problems and challenges that our customers have been having don't aren't, aren't necessarily access control related. Yeah, the door opens. Right. The card works. It, it works, right? We get we get um, the forced door alarms. We that, that all works. But there's there's a number of uh, mm. things that you got to do to maintain that system, and you know our customers have limited resources. 
Um, we're starting to, as I mentioned when, I, when we first started, that's convergence with IT. Mm -hmm. You know, IT access control and physical security is falling on IT a lot more nowadays. Yeah, and they don't understand it, yeah. and uh, oftentimes. Yeah, and so um, you know, a lot of these, these systems out there that need to be upgraded, and some of the pain points that our customers are having, uh, really have just stemmed from not maintaining the environment, yeah. right? not keeping your system up to date. Yeah. And when you do, you're several versions behind, and yeah. then you know you have to, so all that goes away with cloud access control. Mm -hmm. So um, the IT groups truly understand consuming this as a service. Absolutely. They may not know how we hooked up all the doors and made it work, yep. but boy, they understand that, that consumption of service-based model, I can see what I've got in the cloud. I yep. can see how it works. I know where the, my reporting is. I understand how my database is. And it's basically headacheless for them. Yep. Right? Whereas yep. instead of them getting the, oh, we need to buy the latest version of SQL for the yep. newest version oh, of our software. We're growing. I need to go buy another new server. We need a bigger chassis. Yep. Oh, yeah. So yep. been, that has been sort of the bane of our industry. It's never been that the doors don't work. It's been yep. that the maintenance piece is, is I, would, I don't want to say overlooked. A lot of organizations do a pretty good job of it, but oftentimes uh, when you get out of enterprise, you get down to the, some guy who's got 50 hats to wear, and that little piece just gets forgotten yep. until the server dies. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until, <laughs> until you walk in there and it's fire, and then they're like, it's 10 grand for a new server, and new, it's like, well, you haven't bought yep. anything for five years. So consuming it all the time, you know, when an organization's committed to security, it just makes more sense to have that as an operating budget. I think it's a, it's a well-made point. Um, uh, there's another thing here about customers talking about it's old, outdated and it doesn't work. So that's an interesting thing to me because it, it probably does, but they, I think they're saying they want other features. Yeah. So what do you what do you feel like we'll be able to give? You know, what, what's coming next? Because the doors are opening, we're getting the reports. You showed us some great video integration. Um, mm -hmm. Are we going into business intelligence? I mean, there's a lot of lot to be learned there about how our organization works. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I think from our perspective, a lot of a lot of our features that we release and, and new things, new bells and whistles, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, are really driven by our partners sure. and our customers. Sure. Um, so, you know, we we've uh, there's no no schedule, no set schedule as far as how many times a month or a year we do updates, but um, we, we'll take a look at it, and um, you know, if it's something that the customer really needs, let you know, we'll do it. Awesome. So, you know, it's hard to say. I I I, I envision. Um, you know, it's certainly cloud access control becoming more of a uh, of a platform, if you will. Okay. Outside of just access Opening control. Opening doors. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, a number of different sensors that we can bring in, and uh, inputs and outputs, or you know, whatever it may be, becoming more of a security management platform mm -hmm. versus this is access control. Awesome. You know, and this is only access control. Perfect. So. Gang. If you're looking at your access control system and you got questions, think about cloud. It's real. It's happening. Paul, really appreciate you being here today, man. Yeah, thanks Excellent. for having me. Um, we'll be back in two weeks uh, with another edition of Security Matters, and uh, happy Halloween out there. Stay safe. Aloha.